Problem 21. Suppose A, B, C are non-zero real numbers and A plus B plus C is equal to zero. What are the possible values for A over A, um, a absolute value plus B over B absolute value plus C over C absolute value um, plus this term right here? So the idea here is, notice that they're all the same term in the numerator denominator. So they all simplify into one of some sort, but what kind of one? Well, this is equal to zero. Let's first digest this. To understand this, how do we get a number to be equal to zero? Well, a minus a gives zero. So the idea here is I must have a number and the opposite of that number to get zero. All right, so for in that case, then we know that there must be, for, for a, b, and c, right, two of them must be the same number absolute value, but with different sign. So let's assume that, you know, let's say it's two, for example, negative two. But then what must the third term be? Well, the, let these two right already cancels to zero. So b right has to be zero. But b, a, b, c are non-zero real numbers here. So what does that entail? That entails this equation right here. The idea is that if this right here, right, if let's have two negative two, that means that um, this simplifies into one, simplifies into one, simplifies into one. This must also simplify into one. But whatever. Um, whatever this term is, right, it has to be whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as that it satisfies this equation. And to know that, let's first assume that we have a positive, a positive, and a negative. Because it doesn't matter what this term is, because we're always going to have it reduced down to 1. So it doesn't matter. But uh, what, that, what does matter is the sign, because the sign would affect the numerator, whether that's positive or negative. And since we need to have an even number of positive 1 and negative 1s, this will have to go down to casework. So let's say case one, I have a positive number, a positive number, and a negative number. Remember, the positive and the negative number are necessary to cancel, but then the positive number is necessary to potentially make a negative one in this summation. So let's do that. A positive term, let's say that's A, that's B, that's C. It doesn't matter how you assign it, because remember, all of them will just simplify into one at the very end. So this, right, becomes one, right? B is positive, so plus one. But C is inherently negative. A negative number divided by a positive number gives negative one. If C is negative, A times B is positive, then A times B times C will be negative, so minus one. I have an even number of positives and negative numbers. Therefore, I would get a zero. Now, what about case two? The second case is why, do we, why, why must we have two positives? We can also have um, two negatives and a positive. All that matters here is that I have a positive and a negative to initially cancel out, but then the negative symbol will potentially get canceled out in the summation um, that is given to us of the fractions. So let's say, again, this is ABC. It doesn't matter how you assign it because, again, they're all going to simplify into 1. So A is negative, that means it's negative 1. B is negative, that means it's negative 1. C, um, C is positive, that means this is positive 1, right? And what is a times b times c? Well, a times b, negative times a negative gives a positive. Positive times positive gives positive, so that's going to be positive 1. I have an even number of positives and negatives. Therefore, this simplifies into 0. Well, we exhausted already all, all possible combinations of the signs of a, b, and c. Therefore, and they all both produce the outcome of 0. Therefore, your final answer must be choice a.